Hello, people. I finished the book. The First Salute by Barbara Tuckman. Uh, I've been kind of cranking out the books this week. Uh, mostly because I have only worked one fucking day all week long. So, uh, if it looks like I'm not working Monday, then I'm going to have to branch out. I'm going to have to find something new because I cannot survive on one day's work. It's unfortunate that uh, Barbara Tuckman didn't live to be like 130 or 140 years old and just keep reading books so I would have something really good to read because I enjoy every one of her books. Uh, there's always little things that I can pick at. Like this one, uh, this was actually a fantastic book, but a lot of this kind of paralleled what was written in uh, uh, Mahan's uh, magisterial, uh, I read it, I don't know, a month ago or something like that, uh, The History of Sea Power. Uh, a lot of it was just kind of rehashed all of that. No plagiarism, it wasn't word for word. Uh, a little bit about the book. This is actually a first edition. I got this at uh, one of those Goodwill bookstores for like two bucks or something. It was published in 1988, and it's 300 pages. The title, <laughs> a lot of times I don't do a great job in explaining what the title refers to. So the title refers to... First paragraph, page six. It refers to something that a Dutchman did on the island of Saint Saint Eustatius. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that pronouncing that right. It's either in the Windward or the Leeward Islands because nobody seems to agree on where they all fit into that. Uh, the salute is where I'm supposed to start. First paragraph. The salute to the Andrew Doria, ordered on his own initiative by the governor of St. Eustatius, Johannes de Graaf, was the first recognition following the rebel colony's declaration of independence of the American flag and American nationhood by an official of a foreign state. Dutch priority was not the most important aspect of the event, but as other claimants have disputed the case, let it be said that the guns of Fort Orange were confirmed as first by the President of the United States in a plaque presented to St. Eustatius in 1939 over the engraved signature of the incumbent Franklin Delano Roosevelt. The plaque reads, in commemoration of the salute of the flag of the United States fired in this fort on November 16, 1776 by the order of Johannes de Graaf. A lot of the book follows what happens on this island and this is stuff that I was not aware of that the Dutch were really instrumental in keeping the Continental Army in weapons and, more importantly, in gunpowder. Uh, they weren't supposed to be doing this because they had treaties with Great Britain, but uh, the Dutch, being uh, what they were at that time, which was traders mad for money, uh, they did this. And, and it went on for a couple of years before the English finally decided to take the island, which they probably should have done like two years before that. Uh, it was really interesting, the Dutch. And, and uh, another thing, towards the end, right before Yorktown, because this book just kind of leads up, it kind of brings everything to a boiling point, point up to Yorktown and uh, the uh, surrender of Cornwallis. The Continental Army needed money real badly, and, and the French actually did a lot of personal loans because some of the French that were helping us were very rich people. Uh, but the island of Cuba got us through a big jam where we needed money, not just to pay the troops, but to buy gunpowder and all that other stuff. Uh, footnote on page 9. And this is just a uh, 
personal observation of mine. Uh, following the practice of the 18th century, Holland, as the chief of the United Provinces of the Netherlands, is the name used here for the whole of the country. And uh, Barbara didn't really do that because sometimes she referred to them as the Dutch. But uh, Americans being who we are, many of us don't know that. And, and uh, uh, I, I bet you if you ask ten people, five out of the ten would think that Holland is a country. When it isn't, it's the Netherlands. Uh, Holland never puts athletes into the Olympics. The Netherlands does. And to me, it's even more confusing that the people from the Netherlands and the people from Holland uh, are referred to as the Dutch. <laughs> Just, you know, I'm a product of the public schools. Uh, so we're never taught any of that. You have to find that shit out by yourself. There was a, an English admiral named Rodney, and he was the best at that time. All the in, other English admirals were kind of lackluster, kind of indecisive about what they were going to do. A lot of the book, right before Yorktown, goes into what ifs. And if Rodney hadn't been back in England having these op operations, uh, it may have turned out a little bit different. Uh, but what it was is, is there was a guy named Hood and a guy named Graves that were supposed to stop the French from blockading uh, Cornwallis in Yorktown, and those two were just not up to the task. Uh, there's a guy named Clerk who I first met in uh, in my hands book, and Clerk wasn't even a naval officer or even on board ship, but he was the first one to figure out. The guy even made little toy boats and, and experimented on a pond, and he wrote his own book, trying to get the English out of the habit of doing this line on battle. You know. Uh, uh, for, for the obvious reason, uh, what if the enemy didn't form up in line? So, so Rodney was one of the first guys, and it happened after the surrender at Yorktown. He was one of the first guys to uh, to actually pierce the line of the enemy and proceed to destroy an entire fleet. And uh, as we all know, Nelson after that did the same thing. And they introduced Lind again. I always forget his name. But Lind is the guy that figured out how to avoid scurvy. Apparently, at this time, you know, this is almost the end of the 18th century. Some of the English ships are, are still plagued by scurvy. Uh, Mahan, we already talked about him. I was aware that the French had blockaded Cornwallis and, and that their navy had achieved temporary supremacy along the coast. Uh, the American Navy at that time was really so small that, that it was just negligible. And really all, except for the privateers, all the official ships of the American Navy end up getting burned uh, or blown up by their own crews to avoid capture. But my last note is French versus Continental Troops at Yorktown. And, and, you know, I'm a little bit ignorant about the, uh, the Revolutionary War, and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to solve that. I'm going to continue to read. But the French troops outnumbered the Continental Troops. Uh, French money, French artillery. Uh, we really owe thanks to the French and the Dutch, and the Cubans. And then just a little bit about how I proceeded to read this book. The first day, trying to keep an eye on this fucking poodle, the first day I read 120 pages, the second day I read 92, and today I read 88, and it's still pretty early today, so so I kind of cranked out this book. Uh, Tuckman came through for me again. There is a couple of more by Barbara, uh, having to do with, like, Chiang Kai-shek and, and uh, how we backed the wrong horse in China. And eventually I'll find them, and I'll, I'll 
I'll finish off all of her books. Thanks for watching.